After my very brief introduction, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Chris Wright in our Cambridge office. And Chris is going to provide a, a little bit of a technical overview of the advanced editing extension and then a live demonstration. At the end of that, we will open the lines up very briefly to see if there's any immediate questions and answers. But for now, if you could uh, mute your phones using star six or the mute button, we'd certainly appreciate it. So for those of you already using Geocortex Essentials, you'll know the product updates are pretty frequent. So far this year, we've had two updates already to the core product, Geocortex Essentials, and also a new Silverlight Viewer for Geocortex Essentials. So the key functionality that we've had this year so far include uh, the ArcGIS Online Web Map integration, layer level and component level security. We've also had site inheritance. And when you also add in the new G uh, Silverlight Viewer, we now have time-aware slider layers, a reverse geocoder, a batch geocoder, which is for when you're uploading Excel and CSV uh, spreadsheets. Uh, we have undo and redo of redline markups. There's some increased enhancements to the dynamic symbolization. And we also have an advanced spatial filter for the query builder. But actually, the advanced editing extension is probably the most significant a new addition to the product for those wanting both higher precision data creation and editing of uh, spatial data for ArcGIS for server. So with that very, very brief introduction, I'll now hand over to Chris, who will show you the advanced editing extension in action. Chris, over to you. Thanks, John. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as John says, I'll be demonstrating the advanced editing uh, suite with Geocortex Essentials and the Silverlight Viewer. Um, I'll give a brief slide introduction and then go into a live demonstration. This shouldn't take longer than about uh, 15 minutes and then we'll open up the floor for some questions. So during the demonstration we'll cover adding the tools to the viewer, uh, standard versus advanced editing options, the, the copy feature tool, standard snapping, uh, aligning to edges, edge snapping, then I'll do a demonstration and then we'll have a summary and some questions. So adding the tools to the toolbar is, is relatively simple. You can just add it into an existing toolbar um, or you can add a, a tab and a group uh, and have, have the tools on their own separate tab and that's what I'll be showing you later. Uh, when you add the tools, uh, you will get a pop-up that asks you to enable the advanced editing. This is because uh, the advanced editing is a licensed option, but it's a paper licensed option. So you just toggle the editing on and it will work. Um, you just need to make sure that you have the appropriate license in order to use the tools. So standard versus uh, advanced editing. You can see the standard toolbar at the top there with uh, things like select features, delete, cut, reshape, and union. Uh, with the advanced toolbar, you get the ability to align to an edge uh, to copy features, so we have the align edge here, we have uh, the ability to copy features and we have some snapping uh, and some edge snapping. The copy feature tool, uh, this allows you to actually copy from standard map service layers. Previously you were only able to do editing on layers that were feature service layers. Um, editing is still the case but you can now interact with non-edit layers such as map services, so you can select um, a, a non-edit uh, layer for copying an object from. So this might be a master map layer, for example. So you might uh, choose to copy some master map objects into your edit layer and create some new edit layer objects. And you'll see me do that in a demonstration. We also have standard snapping, so you can toggle on which layers you want to snap to. And again, uh, with snapping, you can snap to non-feature uh, layers, so you can snap to map service layers, which speeds up your digitizing uh, accuracy uh, and um, quality. Uh, and just to snap to uh, standard snapping, when you press the control key, uh, your cursor will snap to existing vertices in other objects. Then we have align to edges. Once you've completed capturing an object, you can select an edge and it will offer other edges that you can build into your object. So in this case, the, the blue line is showing a new edge that you might want to add to your object to increase the size of the captured object. 
uh, and thus, again, improving the accuracy of your data capture process. Edge snapping is, is similar to uh, just normal standard snapping. Uh, the difference being that it actually constrains you to the edge of an object that's been enabled for snapping. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't bring in the vertices from the object, it just constrains you to the edge and you can click your mouse button when you want to add in a new point. So with that, I'll go into a demonstration of the new features. So I log into my Essentials Administrator, and you can see that I've got a one spatial edit site here. So I'll edit that site, uh, and you can see if I go to my map layers, that I have some standard map services, Mr. Seed, Master, Master Map and Foreground Assets. Um, the Foreground Assets have some foreground information in them. Uh, and then I have two feature layers. One is my Block Asset and one is my Conservation Area. So these two layers are registered in ArcMap and with ArcGIS Server as feature layers. So they're registered with SDE and they allow me to do editing upon them. I then configure the viewer on this site, and I'll just edit the viewer here, and I'll add in the new tools. So I go to my toolbar, and you can see that I've copied the existing toolbar, and I've now got a configured toolbar, and I'm going to add in a new tab, and I'm going to call the new tab Advanced Editing. Once I've got my tab there, I can add in a new group, and I'll call the group Editing Tools. And then I can just drag the Edit Tools region into my group. And then I can apply the changes to my toolbar. When I apply the changes to my toolbar, you will see that I get prompted to enable the advanced editing. So I'm going to toggle that on. If I wanted to turn the, the advanced editing off, I can do that quite simply by going to the tool behavior option and you can see that I can turn it off here. So potentially you could have a, a viewer with advanced editing tools in it and a viewer with standard editing tools in it and then share that differently across your organization. So having configured the toolbar, we can then fire up the viewer and you can see my data here. I'm going to window in on this area here which is a, this is a school building here and this is the education area or the, the school grounds. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the copy feature option. So I'll bring up my toolbar and you'll see that I've got my tools available to me here. I'm going to select the block asset layer, which is the asset I want to, to edit with or create my new feature in. And then I'm going to select my layers for copying from. I've got them all toggled on here, so I can select any of these objects um, at a given point. So when I want to copy a feature, I click on copy feature, I click on the map, and it identifies all the features that I can copy from at that clicked point. And you see that it's found a building asset. This, this uh, object here is, um, is a, uh, a master map object and then I've got an education object. I'm going to copy the building asset which is the blue guy there. When I click on it, it windows in and highlights it and then I can just click on copy feature. So I click the copy feature. There you can see I've got a new building asset now. So I've taken an object from a standard layer a uh, standard map service layer and created a new object in the block asset layer. I'm just going to give this a primary key and give it a class name. And I'll OK that. So there's my new object and it automatically selects it for me. If I deselect all these objects you can see uh, you can see the building there. There's my building um, in 
my building asset layer. So that's created a new object as easy as that. And it's got exactly the same boundary as uh, the education building there. Um, so now what I'll show you is I'll show you the um, snapping to objects as I'm digitizing. So I've got my snapping layers here. You can see that uh, I've got a building asset layer, so I'll toggle that layer on. And then if I start adding um, a building asset feature, and I just start out in the middle here, and I say, well, I'll follow down here. And now I want to snap to that building. If I hold down the control key, you can see my snap area appear. And as I get close to a vertex, you can see the cross appearing. So it will create me a vertice at that point when I click the left mouse button. So this allows me to create highly accurate digitized objects. And then I can just finish the objects off there. So there's my new object. And it follows exactly the boundary along here. But we might decide that we want to include this complex boundary into my object. So I can use the Align to Edge feature to do this. So I can click on the Align to Edge, click on the edge that I want to align to, and then it will give me options as I move the cursor around as to edges that I can snap to. So if I want to snap to that edge, if I just press the mouse button, it automatically adopts that edge, and I've got a new feature now. So there's my new feature. So very quickly and very easily, I've adapted my existing object. So the same is true for edge snapping. If we come over to these, this is the school playing field here. Let's, let's uh, say we want to create a new conservation area in this corner of the school playing field. The first thing I need to do is I need to select the education areas for snapping, and then I need to turn on edge snapping to be able to snap to those edges. And again, same digitizing options. I click on the Add Feature button. I start digitizing. I get to the, towards the edge of the object. I press the Control key down, and I get constrained to the edge of the feature. So I can just add in uh, vertices as and when I want. If I go around the corner, you'll notice that it doesn't honor the vertices in the existing object. Um, but if I create the new object there, what we can use, again, is the Align to Edge tool to say, I want to take this edge, and I want to align it to this edge. And there we've created a new object very simply, very easily. Um, and you can see that it speeds up the accuracy and quality of the digitizing that an operator would do. That's really the end of the, of the live demonstration, a very simple, very quick demonstration. But in summary, I guess what we can say is that the new tools improve your data capture accuracy. I, I joined the company some time ago as a digital cartographer. And if these tools were, were around then, they certainly would have helped and improved my ability to capture objects quickly and accurately. It improves the data capture speed. Importantly, it allows you to interact with non-edit layers, so you can start using your background mapping to uh, include features into a new object. It allows you to align to edges. Uh, it allows you to copy objects from, uh, again, map service objects, so you can copy the master map if you wish. Uh, it simplifies the whole digitizing process, takes away the ability for users to make mistakes. It is a, uh, an additional cost, um, but I think it's well worth that additional investment. Thank you for your time. I'll just hand back to John now uh, for some question and answers, if you have any. Over to Thanks, you, John. Chris. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everybody on the call found that interesting and potentially useful. The advanced editing extension builds on an existing, uh, more basic 